Alright, good day everyone and welcome back to Dwarf Fortress. I know it's been a while, but I've been busy with the other channel, so we're back tonight. Uh, hopefully with some Terra Invictus soon as well, but for tonight we're looking at Dwarf Fortress again. And I have a basic sort of pattern now that we've done the introductory episode. Every session of Dwarf Fortress back in the old days, I would always try and accomplish a couple of things. One thing against each category. If there was an emergency, you solve it, and then you do something to improve your fort security, something to improve your economy, something to make your dwarves happier because, you know, them being unhappy can end your fort pretty damn quick. And if you didn't have an emergency to solve, you do something cool. So let's open up with doing some happiness, security, and that sort of, and economy sort of stuff. For one thing, I've already gone around my workshops and started using work orders to get uh, instructions in. So for example, a work order means I don't have to do everything manually myself. So this stone workers uh, workshop here, for example, I've used work orders to put a whole bunch of mass orders in for coffers and doors. And over here at this carpenter's workshop, I put in an order with some logic. This is a make wooden bins order, which only fires if the amount of empty bins I have is less than 10. And all of this is administered by my fort's manager. Now the manager goes around, confirms work orders, puts them in place. He's sort of like the person who makes your orders happen. Uh, but of course the downside is he's a noble, he requires a whole bunch of stuff. So I just made my expedition leader my manager because he's already whiny and wants more stuff. So that's happening, um, and I've also consolidated my gathering zones outside to make sure more and more of that fruit comes inside. We will, in a moment, uh, kick up the kitchen as one of the things we're doing this episode. Let's make that plants. Uh, as one of the things that we're doing this episode, in order to make sure that people are happy, we're going to make some, some really nice meals. And the other thing is I noticed I was going through all my dwarves who were a bit pissed and a lot of them were saying they're uneasy because they haven't been able to pray to their gods. Okay, well that we can definitely fix. And the way we fix it is we go to this meeting hall over here and we designate this as a temple to no specific deity. Eventually, we can have a temple to all sorts of, uh, all sorts of deities, but for the moment, this is our temple. I'm building some altars to put there in the moment. And we will also designate the area to be smooth because it should be at least a little bit nice. Another um, possibility for quality of life improvement I'm considering this episode is maybe setting up some dwarven bathtubs to clean my dwarves automatically as they move through the fortress, just to keep them happy and healthy. All good so far. Dump, 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 dump. Okay, so all that rock should be dumped and it should all drop in this little garbage dump here. If you're wondering what I've done here, by the way, I've created a garbage dump and then I designate an all stone that I don't really want uh, that's specifically getting in the way to be dumped, which means the dwarves all put it here. In a stockpile, uh, stone takes up one slot. In a dumping zone, you can fit an infinite amount on the, on the spot, on the location. This is called quantum stockpiling, because the dwarves can fit a near infinite amount of stuff on one square. If later on I want to use this stone, I just unforbid it, so undump it, and the dwarves will pull the undumped stone out of the dump and put it in a stockpile or use it for building stuff. So that's the plan for the moment. But while that's smoothing and the temple is being uh, furnished, let's get some meals cooking and let's talk about security. I'll do the meals off screen and once they start getting produced, I'll show you. So really basic security improvements. At the moment, the entire fortress is defended by these two doors. That's pretty bad. So the two options we have to immediately improve our security is one, we could immediately set up a military, which I want to work towards this episode, but I don't want to actually do this episode because it's a little more involved. Or secondly, get a way to seal the fort if we need to. This means some combination of walls and bridges because there's a trick in Dwarf Fortress. Well, it's not a trick. It makes some degree of sense. Doors can be destroyed by a whole bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of creature types in Dwarf Fortress that can destroy your doors, even if they're made of stone. But... Uh, walls are much, 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 much harder to destroy. So what you want is a wall, but you, you need to be able to walk through a wall. The answer is the bridge. So if you go to constructions and you go bridge, this is actually a draw bridge. So if I build a bridge which covers the front of my fort, and this is the direction it opens. So the idea here is there's a draw bridge, right? And when you trigger the mechanism for the bridge, it raises up, it lifts up, and turns into a wall raising in the direction that you point it. So if I build this bridge like this, when I when it pulls up, it will form a wall in front of the doors to my fort. 
thus making those entries basically impossible to be used. So a really quick security improvement would be to build this here. Now, I don't want to build it out of wood. I want to build it out of stone. Although, don't worry, we'll be doing some mass wood construction in a moment because we haven't got an elvish caravan yet. Uh, that makes me very sad. I want to make sure that they understand what we're about when they arrive. Like, really make sure the relationship gets off to the, the right start. So I'm thinking a giant wooden curtain wall around our initial courtyard and pasture area is exactly what the doctor ordered. Anyway, in the meantime, let's use... Uh, oh, we don't have four casserite blocks. We got a lot of microcline and siltstone blocks, so we'll use four siltstone blocks and build that there. And then I'll teach you about mechanisms and drawbridges, because this will be a very basic security scheme. We can later on use the same thing, or I intend to use the same thing down here to form sort of an airlock. Uh, and also, if we need to protect any of our downward staircases later on, we can do that as well. At the moment, we're just temporarily doing it with doors. Um, but we can also accomplish it with walls if we need to. For the moment, I'm sinking these um, stairs past cavern layer one, and I'm expecting to try and hit cavern layer two. It's a long way down to elevation zero, let alone the massive negative elevation. So we got some serious digging to do if we're gonna go find any magma. And eventually, I'm gonna run into the situation where I want some in order to do economic projects. So that's the initial plan. I'm building some furniture. I'm going to get these noble bedrooms all set up and fancy. The temple is going to be furnished. Uh, and I'm going to get the kitchen producing as well. Once the uh, wall is ready to be... Well, once the bridge is constructed, and I can show you how that works, by the way, we'll be back. Now, before I enable cooking in the kitchen, I do want to adjust what people will cook. Because, you know, dwarves are a creative bunch. They can cook just about everything. Uh, and you really don't want them to cook things that you want to get seeds out of, things like plump helmets. Plump helmets are probably a big one. Uh, if you eat them raw, you get seeds. If you brew them into wine, you get seeds. If you cook them, you do not get seeds, and that's a bad thing. We want seeds, so we want to cook all of these like regular, like these lettuce. Let's cook lettuce and grass. Let's cook fruit. Uh, we can cook booze, because we can produce lots and lots of booze. All this meat, very happy to cook this meat. Uh, and we don't want to cook seeds. Well, we don't want to cook seeds that we're going to grow. Walnuts, pecans, almonds. I'm actually okay with that because there's a, a lot of those out and about. So we can cook those. But we don't want to cook like uh, the dimple cup spawn because there's they're things that we can grow underwater. Not underwater, underground. Um, we're in a really good food place just because we're surrounded by so many fruit trees and the reason my dwarves are getting annoyed is because I keep sending them outside for the free food. But it's free food that we can turn into like an infinite supply of booze and stuff. So yeah, I'm kind of happy to be honest. Um, anyway, let's get the bridge constructed. These guys should leave soon. Um, we don't really have anything to trade them further so we're just going to leave them to head on their way. What's this? Oh yeah, the merchants have embarked on their journey, so they're leaving. Uh, and you... We had someone who was making cloth who can't make any more, because we're out of plant thread, which means we don't have enough seeds. That's okay. Okay, so now we have this siltstone bridge, so all we need to do now is create a lever. I like putting levers. So let's look at... Where will it be? Will it be in cage... Machines and fluids lever. There we are. So I like putting these somewhere you can be pretty sure dwarves will always be. So in this case, uh, one in sort of the northern quadrant of our... Actually, for the moment, considering it's so high profile, I'm just going to put it here by the door. Give it a lime... give it a siltstone mechanism. And this lever is going to be the control for our bridge at the front of the fort. Can't see it right now because we're still engraving. I don't have enough dwarves on engraving duty. They're all too busy gathering ludicrous amounts of fruit. But, you know, I might have to tamp back on that. But you can see they're doing a pretty good job of clearing the area. Um, I can probably remove some of these extra fruit gathering zones. And just fall back on just the, just the big plant gathering area. Um, it's not like we're, like short on fruit at the moment and I'd like my dwarves to do something else if I start seeing people being unemployed on a large scale 
The only person who's unemployed at the moment is the miner who's not allowed to do other jobs. Um, then I might gather some more fruit, but for the moment, that must mean we've dug down pretty deep. We have. So we're in kaolinite now. So what I want to do at this point, oh, crystal cluster. So what we'll do is just dig, a, again, just a little bit of a security airlock zone, seal it, and then start digging down again. Meanwhile, we should be able to get the lever that we have installed. Looks like we have. So we want to link the lever. We want to use this silt zone mechanism. Click a building to link it to. We want to link it to this one. There we are. So a dwarf will now use those mechanisms to somehow run a line of connection between that drawbridge all the way through the walls and whatnot of our fort all the way to that lever. And when that lever is pulled, the bridge will go up, and if it's pulled again, the bridge will go down. So when it initially happens, it might confuse our um, it might confuse our dwarves somewhat because they'll lose pathing to the entire fort, but that's okay. We'll set up a secondary entrance eventually, but right now I'm just after some basic security. That looks like it's uh, now linked. I believe so. Show linked building. Okay, it's linked to that lever. So if we now pull this lever, uh, let's have someone do that as high priority. High priority. There we are. Okay, so see this? This now becomes a wall, and that wall will prevent anyone accessing the doors of your fortress. Like that's that's a good early, that's a good early defensive strategy. We're going to pull that again because we don't want to shut off access to outside the fort. That's not what we want to do right now. Um, we've got some fish here, so I might get a fisher's workshop set up as well. So let's just expand this area out a little bit. Um, and yeah, we're making good progress. I'm cooking some fine meals, might upgrade to lavish, but we should start improving people's moods slowly at this point with more engraving. Um, I should also probably stop sending them outside as much, which I can afford to do. Engraving all of their bedrooms is also a good thing to do. Not engraving, smoothing. I've got a lot of smoothing to do, as you can probably tell. Furniture, let's see if we've built any chests yet. All right, we've got two, uh, and they both unfortunately belong to this guy because he demands two because he's needy, um, but it is what it is. He's got one, he'll need another one. We'll need to put some doors in. Basically, mood is a f protecting the mood of your dwarves is protect is self-defense. Like, it's as important as security because tantruming dwarves are the worst. Anyway, I'm gonna up the luxury of these noble quarters slowly, uh, get some more work orders put in. Uh, and then, once I've got an airlock set up on the dwarf mining situation down here, which I will do. Uh, we're going to dig another set of staircases and see how deep we can go. Okay, so as I was digging down, I have discovered cavern layer number two. This looks, basically the rule is the caverns as you go deeper look weirder and weirder and they're full of more and more interesting but also more dangerous stuff. So for example, a lot of stuff down here is kind of cool. We could collect this, possibly economize this. This soil down here is going to be very, very fertile. But I have fruit trees outside, and I'm not interested in the sort of creepy crawlies that are involved. So I've quickly sent some dwarves down here to put hatches uh, and seal up this layer of stairwells. We'll build another airlock that will avoid this cavern system, and the dig down can continue. Basically, I don't want any entrances into the fortress that are, you know, can be accessed through these things. So we'll put hatches, we'll forbid them, and then if we really need to, we can destroy the stairwells or place a permanent flooring over them, but for the moment, hatches will do. So hopefully dwarves hurry up and actually do that as a matter of urgency, because I don't want anything flying up into the fortress. How deep do we get? We got to level six before we hit cavern layer number two. There should only, if this is an ordinary map, only be one more cavern layer to worry about. There they are, looks like the hatches are going down. Wait for this, we'll forbid this for the moment. And hopefully this one more will go down, then we'll seal all these hatches uh, and we're in good shape. There you 
you are. Let's forbid all these. And cavern layer number two is identified and sealed. We will need more hatches. So I'll order more of those to be built. You're making bins, you're making coffers, doors, tables. I need someone to make me a whole bunch of hatches just as a backup hatch. Whoops. Could use work orders, but let's just do these manually. If I can remember to click this first. gonna make eight I think. It's been a long day as you can tell by my click accuracy. Done. Okay so that'll give us seal up to two additional sets of stairs. What I will do in a moment is we'll look over this cavern that we've identified and identify the right spot where we can tunnel through its structure because we can now see its structure and its floor where we can tunnel through and get underneath it and continue our dive towards the uh, the deeper levels of the game. Uh, the deeper we go, the better, the more exciting stuff that we're going to find. Uh, we just don't want to let the things that we find into our fortress. Pretty simple. All right, so leave that one with me. The other thing that I'm doing for the economy is really basic metalworking industry. So I've got a metalsmith's forge and a smelter. This is the basics behind a metalworking industry. What I'll also build is a... Let's build a... Where is it? It'll be in workshops, right? Okay, so Bowyer's over here. That's all right. Can a metalsmith... Oh yeah, weapons and armor are handled the weapon. I wasn't sure if they were their own building. So anyway, we've been making some charcoal. So we've been burning wood in order to make charcoal. That's food for a smelter, which means we can smelt some metals and produce some basic metal goods. Metal is better than stone in basically every way, except for the fact we need an economic chain in order to support it. So we'll build a bar, a stockpile of bars to provide inputs, and then a stockpile of outputs, armor and weapons, so that we can start producing new picks, new armor, weapons, things that we didn't bring with us so that we can eventually start to have something respectable like a militia. There's a whole bunch of stuff we might want to build out of metal, uh, but for the moment a couple of basic weapons will do. So that's what that is. We need to just decide what... Because we don't have a huge amount of ores that we have discovered. You can see here there's a huge number of materials and we have relatively limited options. Limonite, magnetite, hematite, tetrahedrite. So I think hematite, from memory, will produce iron, and that's a good start. Let's... That's not what I want. I don't have adamantine wafers. I will get better than at this in future episodes. Smelt, hematite ore... And I want you to make, yeah, smelt 15 hematite, just, just to start with. Okay. Um, and this charcoal, we should have more than enough charcoal in order to make that happen. I'll put some stockpiles together. And then we can talk about what's required in order to make a little bit of steel and possibly get some cool stuff. Although a couple of iron picks as just a basic output good probably wouldn't go astray. And we have our first taste of combat, such as it is. One of our war dogs is attacking a local badger boar. It appears to be warding it off. No health problems, no wounds, so our war dog is doing its job. Good on your war dog. Um, other than that, we're doing okay. We've got this forward security going, so I'm thinking it's basically time to consider building a wall. Uh, let's see if we can just eliminate those and then build out sideways, probably. What do we want to build from here? We don't want our wall to we want our wall to encompass a reasonable area because this is just good, but it's just going to be our like initial like inner inner defensive wall, not a massive construction. What we don't want, however, is for anyone to be able to just use ramps in order to get inside our wall. So to that end, I'm probably going to want to eliminate 
probably all the ramps in this area. And later on I can build a covered uh, stairwell up to the upper levels in case dwarves can go by stairwell. Stairwells are always super efficient compared to walking a long distance. Let me just check what's going on with the mood of my really annoying dwarfs. This is just everything's going well, so I'm not sure... Annoyed and uneasy. Horrified because you saw some bodies. Well, you won't see any bodies anymore. I've sealed the carav I've sealed the caverns rather. See, no one no one goes down there. That uh, that one door is not is not the security layer that we were hoping for. So let's just put a uh, let's put a siltstone door there. All good. Although I do think we have a door layer later down. Yes, we do. Okay, well, we're going to resume digging that in a bit. For the moment, I think what I want to do is de uh, designate out. This isn't too messy. I'm happy with that. We can always fix this later. So, a walled area which includes some pasture land, uh, some trees that we can gather fruit from. So, not a huge amount, but you know, a reasonable amount. Uh, and unfortunately probably needs to be, include our refuse stockpile until I build a uh, sanitation solution, which I will in the future, but for the moment, not so much. So, constructions, walls. We can do paved roads, but for the moment, not so much. You say floors or walls? Constructions, wall, there we are. And what we probably want to do is come out... I'm happy for this to be the refuse stockpile to be outside the wall, actually, at least for the moment. So we can come out to like here. And because, you know, we need to impress the elves when they arrive, we actually got a relatively limited supply of wood. Because I didn't want to cut down the fruit trees. I've been waging a war against all non fruit producing trees. So I'm going to have to find some uh, trees that don't produce, not wood producing, fruit producing. Um, so like willow, for example, chop. Sand, pear, cherry, willow, chop. Any tree that is not being actively uh, productive in the name of dwarven civilization uh, is it? It's going to get. It's going to get the chop. Peach, apple, apple, cherry. Man, this is a nice place. Be a shame if some dwarves came along and industrialized this area, because later on we are not going to be quite so nice with all these fruit trees once we've got our own production to worry about. Sand, pear, apple, walnut, pecan. Yeah, I might even have to sacrifice some fruit producing trees. As weird as that sounds. Because we could never eat all of this. We could never. So I might sacrifice... I might go up a level. Sacrifice some of these trees up here. Although I can always access those using a stairwell. So maybe the ones further away from the fort. So like this apple tree, this peach tree, this sand pear. Like all these, they can go, they can become wood. So how much wood does it take to build a giant wall out of wood? Just to, just to horrify the new arrivals. If I built just this bit out of wood, how much would it take? 15 wood. Oh, I might have to build most of my... You know what? I'm going to have to build my... and I'll build my inner wall out of stone just for the moment. Uh, and then we'll make an impression on the elves later with an outer layer just for their benefit or maybe we can even pave the ground with wood that's that's an option anyway what i'll start with something like that as a beginning of an inner fort so say about there and we'll start with siltstone and then we'll expand out cross over we'll use a drawbridge front area as security again come back to the side, seal it, and then we have this little courtyard that belongs to us where we can pasture our animals and also where some of our fruit trees are growing. So for example, persimmons, sand pears, we've got a reasonable number of fruit trees that are going to be inside our walls. We might have to build just one more, otherwise we're going to hit that tree. 
siltstone blocks done. All right, leave that particular construction project with me. Why is there troll blood there? Oh, look at this nice thing. That's a cave crawler. Now, it looks like a giant leech with gnashing teeth. You can see why I was like, no, nah, nah, we're not going to explore Cavern 2. We're just going to seal it off. Uh, it's, a, it's a later problem. Because we can go get wood from down there, but we have plenty of wood above ground because we're settling in elf country. So I just, I just have no interest in this thing, whatever it is. Um, yeah, awesome. Okay. I've also assigned the needy dwarves in my group at least rooms and offices to keep them happy. They still want other things. Um, chess, studies, all sorts of stuff. But at the very least, they've got their modest quarters set up, so they're not going to be as pissed as they otherwise would be. What do they need? Niga study, modest study. Yeah, they look like they're doing okay with at least the rooms, so that'll do it for the moment. I'm not going to bother with a a floor for dead people just yet. That seems like quitter talk. But I will keep the goods flowing. What I really need, um, and this is a strange thing to say, is because engraving is a job, if you're looking at how I schedule my dwarves, engraving is something you do when you have nothing else to do. Um, but everyone else has got something to do. So other than this peasant, who's, I believe, only labour should be engraving, so we will designate him to engraving. Uh, he should now engrave full time. That might help us catch up. He shouldn't have been stone cutting, he should have been engraving. Um, that may put us in a slightly better place, but we'll see how we go in terms of productivity. Certainly furniture production should start to catch up, but I want to engrave all this and then I want to give people doodads to sit in their bedrooms to make them a little happier. Um, but the more engraving, the not engraving, the more smoothing the better. Dwarves like it more when you have smooth uh, rooms. They think rough stone is ugly by comparison, and you know, who can blame them? How are we doing? We've got 300 drink, 400 food, 100 seeds. We're doing fantastic in that regard. Look at this room full of just nothing but different sorts of booze. What a time to be a dwarf. Someone has become a woodworker. Okay, so one of our dwarves. I haven't named anyone. I'll name people next episode if there's interest. Um, I can use patrons as nicknames for dwarves. I can't re take away their entire name, but I can give them patron nicknames. So if you have a particular dwarf that you would like named after you, here is a quick list if you want to pause it. We've got miners, medical dwarves, woodworkers, carpenters. We've got all sorts of people. I'll look through my dwarves in a future episode in detail. But if any of these interest you, just let me know. Awesome. All right, so we've got a dwarf here who's normally our leather worker, but our leather worker doesn't have anything else to do. So can I make le our leather worker just learn how to be a metal worker, please? Um, no, apparently not. I'll figure that out in a bit. Uh, this, because this hematite, I want this to be happening, right? Like, I want people to be producing hematite so I can get a little bit of iron so I can start to produce some tools. Engraving is happening, bedrooms are being created, life is good. Let's go downstairs and think about our deep constructions. Yep, yep, I know we don't have enough cloth. All right, so we've lost a tiny bit of progress. We've basically caught up. Uh, I did have a crash there, but one thing that's happened as I've gone back in is this guy, Mamuz here, has gotten a Fey Mood. A Fey Mood is one of the many ways in which a dwarf gets a sudden burst of inspiration. Uh, and then decides to build something really quite special. So where is Mamuz at the moment? What happens is they go gather gather things, uh, collect them in a workshop, uh, and then they construct something. Unless you don't have what they need, in which case the, then you're in trouble. Uh, they, they don't like it when that happens. Let's add some doors here because I'm reconstructing the bookkeeper's area. The bookkeeper is the one who's going to turn these approximate numbers into... Basically, he's the accountant, which means he's clearly the most important person in the fortress. Um, so he will spend all of his time counting things and telling us how much of the stuff uh, we have. So let's give him a bed. Let's give him some chests. We'll give him both the siltstone coffers. 
We'll give him some tables. Have a cherry and a pecan. Because I like getting rid of the ones that we have small numbers of. Let's go cherry and... Should have gone sand pair. Anyway, sand pair there. So that should give him a nice little place. We'll assign it to him as soon as it's structured, and then he'll be happy and no longer angry at us, just like he was a moment ago in the alternate timeline. Meanwhile, the digging person has rediscovered... rediscovered this cavern layer and dug a route through it. Oh, that looks like some interesting stuff to mine. Anyway, I figured... Oh, slate... Slate walls, nothing particularly cool. I just like the different types of stone. Um, so again, we'll dig, we'll airlock, and we'll keep diving, and we'll try and find cavern number three. Once we've found cavern number three and bypassed that, then it should be a straight run down to the stuff that we need to collect, which could be a very long way down. Like at that point, we could be looking at a significant dive well beneath the earth. How many negative Z levels have we got? It's not going to... Well, either it's not going to tell me. Well, okay, more than 100 negative Z levels. So it's a long dig. Like a long... 125. Negative 125 Z levels. So, what are we at? We're at Z level 40. We've dug about a quarter of the way to the bottom. And the bottom is where we might have to get to. Did the smelter finish? I'm going to try this again. Oh, no, it's got the work order. So hopefully the manager will organize that because I would like to get some hematite smelter to get some iron. Then we need to think about pig iron um, and eventually steel because some steel would not go amiss. So our dwarf is now doing what is called a mysterious construction. This could be basically anything. I didn't track what objects they've grabbed. Uh, this is the medical dwarf, so... Lord knows. Um, and we'll see what they produce. I'm pretending not to be more interested in the hematite, but there we are. Ah, we've discovered an expansive cavern underground and a deep pit. Well, I don't like deep pits. Alright. What have we got? And I've created a masterpiece willow chair. That's fantastic. I'll pay attention to that in a moment. Okay, so this cavern system is flooded. And it wasn't that deep. Alright, so what I want to do is cancel this. Dig this. Remove this. So this will create a little side area. Because this is the bottom layer. And this will allow us to hatch at that level. And that should defend us from anything. Okay, that miner better not be... Oh my god, you're going to sleep, you... <clears throat> That's bad, because now we have to hope that nothing flies up through the stairwell in the intervening time that it takes for Asmel here to sleep. One thing I can do... Yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sacrifice a level here, which doesn't really mean anything, and I can hatch these two right here. I'm going to need to go build more hatches. Uh, that'll seal at this level, level negative 8. And we can go from there. We'll dig out at level negative 7 and find a way to dig around the cavern. We can always recover the riches of those other levels if we need to, but who needs to for the moment? So what have we got? Nether caps, mushrooms, a whole bunch of water, huge supply of water, pile of mud, open space. This is all water. And then by level ne negative 16, the cavern has passed. Okay, we can deal with this. As long as people install those um, hatches relatively quickly, 
then I think we're okay. Because Lord knows what lives down there, but at least it's likely to be things that live in the water. And things that live in the water are unlikely to fly, all else being equal, I hope. Okay, there's our artifact. It is a siltstone bed. She offers it to the tour of faces. Alright, so we now have an artifact bed. Now, if I'm right, if I look at my medical dwarf here, my medical dwarf in terms of its skills, legendary dwarf, legendary miner rather, alright, um, doesn't look like any legendaries in anything else. Alright, I'll take it. And it's also a good reminder that at some point... Okay, we're manufacturing iron, we just haven't stored it in a bin or anything. Um, reminds me to set up a medical section relatively soon. And over here, we're going to do a new work order that every time we don't have at least eight hatch covers... We make eight hatch covers. We're going to take up a reasonable amount of room, but, you know, I think that's actually a relatively prudent thing to do. Um, dining room's expanding. Temple is getting better. Uh, I'm going to fix that bedroom again that we had before. And I will come back once we have secured that third cavern and not, you know, been eaten by whatever lives there. It's winter above, but you know what? Uh, that's not going to stop me digging. My goal here is, since I'm now through all three cavern layers, let's dig to level negative 75 and see if we get any hits. Um, I have hatches on standby in case I need to rapidly seal. I've got some doors for very basic security, um, although that's not immensely positive against the sort of things we might encounter, but let's see if we can get any hits on the stuff that I'm after down to about level negative 75. On the surface, life is pretty good. It's colder and rainier than usual, but fortifications of our little interior area, our little food, fruit supply, and animal pasturing zone is going well. We should also probably establish some outdoor farming out here as well at some point, but I have so much food and drink at the moment that it's not really a priority. Um, getting happiness up is. Happiness is still a little stubborn in the fort. I'm still seeing people saying they're unable to pray. But I have a temple. So what am I missing that prevents them praying? This this I don't understand. This is one of the more stressful parts of Dwarf Fortress, watching your dwarves dig ever, ever deeper. Because once you've scattered out the, the core underground terrain features, you're a little bit safer. But at this point, life is still a little stressful. At this rate, it looks like we're going to hit our target without any major discoveries. A couple of crystals, gemstones. Tourmaline. Do I want to keep going? Dig to 85. Okay, looks like our miner is done with the deep delving for the moment. You know what? I can't blame them. Might be too much for one episode if we dig too deep too quickly. Fortification work here. We'll keep proceeding. We're going to put another bridge here, a sort of an outer bridge layer, and some side access bridges. And we'll rig them all up to a lever so we can seal the exterior access at, you know, all at the same time. We'll need to cut down that tree, though, obviously. So let's construct, just for when the elves arrive, for their benefit... Let's construct a two, a two long bridge made out of, what do we need, four? Let's make it out of good, solid oak wood. What do you reckon? Would we want pecan for that nice colour? Now, oak's a good, strong wood, so we'll build a giant oak bridge. That'll be our outer gate. I don't think anyone can destroy that sort of wooden 
uh, wooden bridge, but we might put a backup stone fortification immediately behind it, just a little bit of extra thickness. Uh, and the other thing we'll need to do is eventually build a um, an anti-climbing layer. So something that prevents creatures that can climb, climbing over our wall. That's going to require building an overhang, I believe. But let's get this done first. Too tall, it, should, it shouldn't be climbable. And if it is, I'll disassemble and replace it later. Right now, I'm just putting together an initial sort of defense. It's only the first winter. We should have a bunch of hematite done by now. Oh, looks like we've got some stuff growing here. That's kind of cool, including a nether cap. This is an underground tree. So since we've discovered caverns, we can get cavern moss and stuff in our territory because the spores are spreading to us from the caverns. This is a good thing. Um, eventually, I'm going to be able to move my animal grazing insides because they can eat, I believe, under lichen and floor fungus, and I think they can eat a lot of this stuff. And things like nether caps, well, now ca nether caps, tower caps. I think tower cap you can definitely use as wood. I think I confused nether cap and tower cap. Tower cap, uh, that's a tree, basically. So life is good. Have I expanded the temple yet? I have. I was worried the temple might be too small, so I've expanded it. Except, there we are. Now let's see, how much dance area do you have now? 6x5, you've got 6x5 dance area. All visitors welcome. So I'm really confused as to why no one is praying here. Like, I'll give the room a cabinet. And I'll give the room a chest. And I'll designate all this for smoothing, but at some point I'd like people to pray in my temple rather than complaining about the fact they can't pray. Also the fact, Mr. Bowyer, you're an engraver. You absolutely have a job. Get back to doing it. Iron, 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 iron. Might be time to make some pig iron and some steel soon and get some cool little things going. And you can see my backup hatch covers looking good. All right, I'll wait for, wait for notification that the miner has done that. I'm betty, pretty sure what's happened is they were digging out the temple instead. And now they've decided to take a break and they're praying. Okay, so someone's praying. Someone's praying. The temple must be usable. So hopefully people start to cheer up. Like, seriously, please, guys, cheer up. Um, what I might do is replace the fine meals with lavish meals. That might make people even happier. Because this is not a great average happy uh, happy point. Look, we basically hit our core basic objectives. I said, if there's an emergency, deal with an emergency. There was no emergency. Security, we've got an inner airlock now. We're building the outer airlock. Uh, in terms of the economy, work orders are established and a basic metal smithing industry is running in the sense that we're producing a whole bunch of iron bars. We'll produce pig iron, we'll combine them together, we'll make ourselves some steel. Um, oh, we've only smelted five hematite. That's okay. Once we've done that, we'll do a pig iron order and then we'll do a steel order and we should be good to go. One thing I am missing is a whole bunch of engraving. He's praying now. He's the one who was pissed about not being able to pray. So if you would hurry up and become happy, that would be nice. And if you, Mr. Engraver, well, Weaponsmith turned Engraver, could hurry the hell up. I don't know how people get their forts engraved so quickly. My fort's running great other than the sense, other than the sense that it's all basically unrefined stone. All right, back in a minute. So I decided to check in on what on earth I'm cooking for my dwarves to make them feel better about life. And the first item there is wombat brain stew, followed by hungry head lung stew, followed by more wom wombat heart stew, cabbage stew, celery stew, lettuce stew, radish plant stew. It looks like we're converting a whole bunch of our... Uh, collected vegetables, and then finally we get down to things like peach stew, 
radish plant stew. Yeah, we're mix. So basically, what it is it looks like we're mixing booze and either meat or cabbage in order to make food. And maybe this is why the dwarves still aren't particularly happy. Anyway, they got their temple. Their temple is working now. We should make more instruments for it because apparently people like to play music in the temple. So we're going to, need to go to the craft dwarf and go. I think we'll we'll work order this. Work order. Um. What's the name of the really simple instrument that you can make without anything else? An ist, an ist bar. So if you could make like five of those, that would be great. Thank you so much. Where is my miner? Is my miner still praying? My miner says they have no job. That is that is objectively false, unless they have act. No, they have not act actually dug everything. So it'd be really nice if they went and dug. Masterpiece armor stands. That's nice because we've got really good carpentry. No, okay. Our miner is now our miner is now meditating on stuff. This woodworker has no jobs, which means there's no hauling to do. Surely they could be off constructing. We're getting very, very close to the point. At, or they're a woodcutter. Chop down the bloody tree. Um, okay, D dwarves annoy me sometimes, but you know what? They are brilliant. They're brilliant and stupid in their own way. But right now, the great wall, or well, the great inner wall is going up. Once all this is connected, we will connect all three of these bridges to one lever. That can be our outer defensive lever. We can then improve the wall with like overhang protection and other things. But at the very least, this will be a nice welcoming committee because we should get the elves arriving, I hope, this season. Um, if not, there are ways we can contact them and ask if they want to come look at our fantastic wooden bridge and all the other exciting stuff that I'm going to build too. You know, just to, just to show them our ingenuity. We're also producing our first pig iron, so steel is getting pretty close. Steel is created. Steel is very uh, fuel hungry, so we'll you know make some more charcoal. You know the el the elves will understand. <clears throat> um, make twenty charcoal. Uh, you need to make iron, and then you need to make pig iron, and then you need to um, smelt them together again with even more fuel and flux stone in order to produce steel. At least I think that's how it's done. I'll check the exact formula before you try and produce any steel, but I know you need pig iron and standard iron, so we're working on both. And steel, steel will be fantastic. Does anyone, you know, you're a, this this blacksmith can engrave, I think. The more people who can engrave in their spare time, the better, because the engraving process is going... Do engravers or stone cutters smooth walls? This might be my problem. One moment. No, apparently I'm right. It's in, it's in, it's meant to be engravers, so we'll let that keep going. My animals are having fun. There's a snail hanging out here. Nothing too dangerous. Everything dangerous right now is either in the forests of the elves, who we haven't antagonized yet, or deep below, which our miner. I think I'm actually going to create a second miner. <laughs> In fact, there's a bunch of miners, including our chief medical dwarf. Maybe if I... No, she's going to sleep. I have like four miners, and only one of them does it full time, is the way I've currently configured things. But at this rate... I might have to change things. And Expedition Leader, you can also enable engraving and stone cutting, but mostly engraving. Because seriously, guys, there's a lot to do around here. This woodworker with a wheelbarrow is going downstairs for some reason. I know not what. But who knows? Only good things can come of it. Do I need to... Have I messed this stairwell up? Yes, I have. I hadn't designated the... This was an up stairwell. I hadn't designated it to also be a down stairwell. That was the problem. 
I was blaming my miner. It is not my miner's fault. My miner would have wanted... Actually, no, my miner wants to eat. My miners would have been digging if I had designated things correctly. Ah, if you're going to fail, fail while you're recording. This stockpile is getting pretty full of random crap. Which means, ideally, my dwarves will start storing stuff in, you know, the other fortresses, the other storages. There we are. Give them more room to store furniture, if nothing else. Wood stockpiles looking good, temples looking good. We can't make plants because we don't have cloth. That's to be expected. Work order, weave thread into cloth, 20. And your rule is, if you ever have less than 10 cloth, make more cloth. <laughs> ah, work orders are great. Let's cut more gems. We should have discovered some more. Pig iron, whatever, all good. Making charcoal. The fact that people aren't making stuff in the other workshops means that we have enough of the other furniture goods, which is fantastic. I should probably issue those tables to the dining room or somewhere else, or I could give everyone's bedroom a table once they finish smoothing so I can see what I'm damn well doing. <sighs> ah, good. Wall construction is going very, very well, and... done. Okay, that will complete the ground layer of the surface wall, which is the most basic level of this construction. Then we'll need to rig up a, uh, a lever, connect it to all three, set it in the dining room, and that will be our outer security layer prepared. We're still technically vulnerable because at the moment I believe people can climb over our wall, so we need to build this second layer up here and overhang protection. But you know what? It, visually, visually the basics are done. 540 drink. We can probably sell some booze if people come around. Hey, and we now only have one very angry person instead of two. Not everyone's thrilled. Most people are in the, like, we're sort of slanted towards the lower level, but, you know, we're looking pretty good. Why can't I... Okay, for some reason I can't collect those grapes. Maybe I already have. Ah, oh, the miner is praying again. This miner doesn't spend a particularly large amount of time mining. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, we've seen the magic notification. Warm stone. So what we're going to do is at this level, 89, because we know this is warm. Warm means in contact or near contact with magma. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a actual, like, serious, um, serious security arrangement down here, or at least a, a slightly more serious security arrangement down here, uh, complete with a hatch defense system, which I've constructed on a higher level. There's the there there are hatches. So that's our fallback position. So we're going to dig a little side area here. And we're going to see whether we're dealing with a lot of magma or a little bit of magma. And the way we're going to do that is by poking one square of channel, which just removes the floor in this location. Okay, it looks like no. So I'm tempted, given that, let's channel this block, because this also says warm, right? So there might be a little bit of magma out this way.
And then which was the warm square? This one. Just channel this section. Okay, so this was warm. So I'm thinking it's maybe one level down from that. So here's what we need to do. Do I need to pre -const so these are no these can just be constructed. Okay, so we don't need to build them in advance. And we've got a little bit of stone here. Because what I might have to do is throw some barriers up. I'm going to remove some walls here. Okay, this is all still warm. Let's dig down. There we are. We have discovered a great magma sea. We've discovered unusual volcanic walls studded with gems. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that immediately. This is an open space. Construction. Now I'm forgetting, do we need floor bars or a floor grate? I'm going to check this. I need one or the other, and I need to put a block over this square of magma. But there it is. Glorious, glorious magma. If you dig far enough, you're going to find it. If you're on a volcano, you might find it well above. But if you're on any map, you'll eventually dig down and find a supply of this good stuff. This melts dwarves on contact. It kills most creatures on contact. It's incredibly hot. And it's exactly what I was looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to seal this spot. And then I'm probably going to wind up the episode. Okay, so one of our dwarves has put some iron floor bars over the access to the magma. And so the stage is set for what comes next. Magma is very, very useful in Dwarf Fortress, but we won't discuss its potential until next episode. But suffice to say, uh, once the elves come to visit and we establish proper diplomatic relations, we're going to be happy with the fact that we're accessing magma. Our outer fortifications are basically in shape. The economy is running perfectly. Uh, we need to do some optimization around our storages, and obviously people, you know, need a little more work in the industry in the industrial areas in particular I'm pretty sure the smelter should be able to start making some steel bars which is what I was really after steel is a fantastic asset now yes uh, I do want magma for a reason but for the moment burning trees in order to do it all that's just fine we're almost finished with all our charcoal, so let's just produce for the moment uh, a work order for steel bars. Ten's a good start. So we'll get started on that. That's enough to build some material. The dwarves are a little bit happier than before. We've still got some people going back to depressed. I need to figure out more ways to make the uh, ungrateful bastards happy. Maybe little swimming pools and things like that, as discussed. In um, smoothing all of these areas and making their bedrooms nicer, always good could potentially switch from fine to lavish meals, which will give them even fancier food. That might make them happy. Um, we'll enhance the temple. We'll do everything we can to make the bastards happy. I might even have to make lots of little temples for all their little individual gods so that they can worship those individually rather than this non-denominational non temple that they're all currently worshipping at that seems to be making them sad. Yeah, frustrated at being unable to pray, fun, uh, unable to pray, like, hey, I've, you've got a temple. If someone knows what I'm missing on the temple thing, because I think it's one of the big drivers of my unhappiness. Other than that, stocks of everything are really solid. Uh, we've got furniture, we've got um, 
we have furniture, we have food, we have drinks, we have seeds. Now that I have the wall up, if I once I enhance the exterior wall in order to like properly prevent access rather than just looking nice, which won't take very long next episode, we can put some external farms here for the specific, not because we're like short on food, but because specific crops you can only grow outside. We might want a little bit of them. We'll see. I hope you are enjoying. This was mostly a get the fortress stabilized and specifically dig really deep and discover magma episode. Because if you're not introducing magma by episode 3, are you really even playing Dwarf Fortress? This stuff is fun. See you all soon.